All right, so we're continuing in our endeavor to build uh, a file player. Very nice. So in the previous lessons, what we've done up until now, let's review, even though we, we really have done very little, but let's nevertheless review. So what have we done? So we created, we opened a Visual Studio 2010 and we created a new Visual C++ Windows application, empty application. We added a main.cpp file. We created an empty winmain function. We included the dshow.h. We invoked co-initialize, returned hr, tested if it failed the hr, and thrown an exception in case it failed. We, we basically copied this function throw if error from the msdn, we reviewed it, and we also added two libraries, two static libraries to the project. Okay, what I neglected maybe to mention is basically this function string cc, basically I guess string copy character printf. So what it does is it, it copies into sz error a length of this many characters from uh, basically this format together with these values. So this is the value that it copies into this string in case it fails. Okay, we'll have many chances to see when things fail, so we'll come back to this function maybe at one point or another. All right, so let's continue. <laughs> back to the uh, MSDN. So click back and back and back and forward. How to play a file. That's where, where, where we were. Where we were. Very nice. So we invoke co-initialize up until now successfully. The next step is to invoke this co-create instance. Now I should mention that co-initialize and co-create instance, if you go to the MSDN and look up these functions, you would see, maybe we should do it, you would see that they are not part of the of the direct show library. These are actually com library functions. They have nothing to do with direct show. However, direct show is based on com. So we will be using these functions that start with the CO quite a bit. Now, invoking co-initialize is just something that applications, that direct show applications need to do on every thread that they, in which they access the direct show library. Also, at the end, we will have to invoke the opposite cleanup function. Let me skip to the end. Let me see co-uninitialize. So let me invoke also co-uninitialize right now. Obviously since I'm writing everything in the win main app uh, function, so when the win main is finished, so the process is torn down by the operating system and it's completely cleaned up. So it doesn't really make any sense to clean up at the end of the function. However, tomorrow morning we might want to take this function and put it into another application and that and ending the function is not going to end the containing application and we might be finding ourselves invoking this code again and again 
And if we don't um, invoke co-uninitialize at the end of calling every co-initialize, so that is not something good to do. All right, so enter control V, invoke co-uninitialize. First F6, make sure that that works. Very nice. Hover over, and as you can see, co-uninitialize is void. So it doesn't return an HR. So there's nothing uh, to test. So that's that. Let's go back again to the MSDN. Very nice. Okay, so the next step is to invoke this function, co-create instance. Basically, this is um, an allocation of, of something. And what we're going to be allocating is this class, the filter graph class. And we will be extracting from it the iGraph Builder interface. Now, Again, Directro is COM based. It would be very nice if you knew COM. It would be very nice if you knew Directro. It would be, you know, it's very nice. However, if you don't know COM and you don't know Directro, so hopefully you should be able to understand everything that I, that I say. So, Sometimes we will be understanding things more intuitively. Some other times we will really understand them in depth. So you can read about co-create instance, right? You have a link over here. Um, so let's, for now, let, let's understand what the purpose of this invocation is. So basically, if we go back there's nowhere to go back to, so let me scroll up and open the introduction in another tab. <laughs> because what I'd like to show, uh, show you, or point out again, is this diagram. So you could say that the, right, that the filter graph or the iGraph builder, you could say that it is the gray stuff behind. This is what we're going to be using in order to build our graph, in order to put these components together and play the file. All right, so again, Let's copy this block, copy, go back to the Visual Studio, very nice. Now, I would like to paste it over here, Control V, Tab and Tab, um, and also call the throw, yeah, basically that's what I'd like to do, very nice. So, we'll be invoking co-create instance, we'll be returning HR, HR we already have from before, so we, we, we cannot declare it again, right, we cannot declare it again, so I'll be erasing the, or, um, the allocation, yeah, the declaration, the type of HR, so we'll be reusing HR, which is a bit confusing, but it's not the end of the world. So HR, and then we'll be testing HR. So we'll be invoking co-create instance. As you can see, uh, by including the D show H, we already, I can hover over these functions, and or at least this function, and we can see basically what's going on here. So the first parameter is a CLS ID. It's a class ID. And you can hit, click, and F12 and see the definition of CLS ID filter graph and th there's really not too much to see except for it's a bunch of numbers and this is one of the ideas of COM and that is that classes are defined um, it's called globally Can okay? yeah globally unique ID that defines this class, the filter graph. So
So when we allocate, we're not just allocating with a name, but rather with a sequence of numbers that globally, uniquely, throughout the, the world, or ultimately throughout the, the globe, the planet, uh, is a unique identifier of the class. And this class is already in this computer. Yeah, when I installed um, Windows or one of its components, I already installed the implementation of this class. All right, so let's go back to our application and save it. So we'll so we'd like to allocate this class that again you could say is actually something like the gray stuff on which we're going to be placing you could say it's not entirely accurate but something like that you can see if you can you can understand from the name deduce from the name filter graph well it's a this is the graph of the filters and you can see from the interface that one of the interfaces that it exposes the interface of the graph builder it's going to be it includes functionality that allows us to build graphs all right so let's uh, see the next parameter the first parameter is the CLS ID the next parameter is the uh, I think it should always be null. After that, we have the context, and this says here that the context is an in proc server, which just means that the actual implementation, or rather allocation of this object, should be right within the context of our own process. Very nice. The next parameter is which interface to extract from it initially, and we're, we're asking for the iGraph Builder interface. We can hit F12 here as well and see the actual functions or methods that are exposed by the iGraph Builder class. And we can see. Well, first of all, that it inherits from iFilterGraph, which exposes a bunch of functions as well. And these are the functions that are exposed by the iGraph Builder. So, for example, we'll be able to connect an outgoing pin to an incoming pin using this function. Right. So, again, going back to this picture, so this is an outgoing pin and this is an incoming pin and this is a connection and the function connect of the iGraph filter interface will allow us to connect these two pins. Again going back to the Visual Studio, going back to our code, very nice. The last parameter is the address of this pointer to the iGraph builder interface again F12 or F8 so again this is an actual uh, class type and this is a pointer and this is a pointer to a pointer or the address of a pointer which is basically we need this cast because this function accepts of a pointer to a void pointer and this is um, actually I'm not even sure we need this let's hit first F6 see how it reacts build succeeded if we remove this F6 hmm F8 F8 what happened let's see do we have errors well, as you can see, these are IntelliSense errors. I'm not, I'm not sure it's a real error. Anyway, Control Z, again, Control Z, F6, and we'll stop here and continue this.